morning, good morning, good morning. This is a day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and being glad in it. Good morning, Palestine United Methodist Church, family, friends. Good morning, Facebook Live world. I just want to start off this morning letting you know that I am giving Caesar, which is the government, what's the government? It's the matter. And I'm giving God what's God. That's the word. I am Pastor Maurice McIntosh coming to you live this morning from Palestine United Methodist Church in the big city of Nellington, Mississippi. And we greet you this morning in the name of the Lord. I thank God this morning for my lovely wife who uh, my number one fan and my number one critic. Thank her for being with me this morning. Also, my son in the ministry, Brother Joseph Ivy, taking out his time, uh, his only day off today, to come and assist me in getting the word of the Lord out to God's people. Amen. I want to also want to take time out to wish everyone here uh, that had a birthday in the month of April, happy birthday. Uh, we love you, and ain't nothing you can do about it. want to give a shout-out to our youth and our children and coordinators and our debt ministry also, a big part of Palestine United Methodist Church. I also want to give a shout-out to my musicians. Miss all of you. We love y'all, and we just can't wait for those songbirds to get back up in the house of the Lord and give us ministry in the music. Also, all the members, friends, and family, we miss all of you all. And this too shall pass. We just got to hold on. Change is going to come. With that being said, I'm not going to be long this morning, but everything can be changed with the moving of the Holy Spirit. And we welcome the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. The Bible says, when two or three are gathered in my name, I shall be in the midst. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit, this morning. Amen. Amen. I thank God right now that uh, for those that are on our sick and shut-in list, all the names that uh, that are listed here, we we will be lifting them up this morning. For all of those who said, uh, when you pray, pray for me. We will be lifting you up this morning. Amen. We will be lifting up. All the bereaved families all over the land this morning, which are many. We will be lifting up those families and friends that, that don't uh, know Jesus in the pardon of their sin. We will be lifting them up also this morning. We will be lifting everyone that come to our heart and mind, everyone that the word that can hear the sound of my voice this morning, we will be lifting them up. Would you pray with me, please, this morning? Gracious God, we thank you for your goodness and for your wonderful words to the children of men. We thank you for saving us from our sins. We thank you, God, that you gave your only begotten Son that we might live. Jesus gave his life shed his blood, died in our place. He bore our punishment, but then he rose from that dead so that one day we too may rise to new life. We thank you that he is our provider. We thank you that he gives us just what we need to live in this world. He is our way maker. He goes ahead of us, preparing our way. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the path to walk in. He is our salvation. He provided all that we need that was pleasing to our Father. So now we can come in the presence knowing that we will receive answers to our prayers. He is our warrior because he fights all our battles. He is our healer. He provided our bread and, and water and take the sickness out the midst of us. 
Yes, our Lord is our healer. For by his stripes that he bore for us, we are healed. So glory and honor to his name. Right now, Father, you know every name. You know every need. Lord, uh, uh, some name may skip by memory, but, but you know every need and you know every circumstance. And right now, Lord, I lift them all up to you. Father God, you have been our dwelling place. You are our Father's Father's dwelling place. You have been the dwelling place for all generations. And right now, Lord, we give it all to you because you are God and you are God all by yourself. You are the God that heals us all, all of our diseases, and you never change. You said in your word that if two of you shall agree concerning anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them. Father God, right now, we asking for salvation. We asking for deliverance. We asking for healing right now in the name of Jesus. We asking for peace in the midst of this storm. Right now, Lord, we standing in, in the need right now, Lord. We standing in agreement with everyone for their needs. Right now, Lord, we pray that when you come back, you'll find us ready, waiting, doing your will. Lord, we know right now that we're sending out your word. And the Bible says your word does not come back void. Whatever it's sent out to do, it accomplishes. So right now, Lord, we're standing and believing in your name. In your precious son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. And be glad in it. Thank God for another chance and another opportunity to stand before God's people. Amen. I know that these have been some trying days. I know that these days have been long. I think yesterday was one of the longest days I had since I've been off. Looked like it was never ending. I thank God this morning that I, I'm able to stand this morning and, and, and look back. Tomorrow will be April the 27th, and April the 27th, nine years ago, uh, man, that's when a tornado came through and devastated our home, took everything that we had but our lives, but God gave us a new beginning. God sometimes have to take the old in order for you to start the new. Amen, because a lot of old stuff we'll try to hold on to. So God will deliver. Amen, I want to just talk a little while this morning to you and, and let you know that this too shall pass. Amen, it shall. Amen, we continue to, to do what the government asks and we continue to do what our Lord and Savior has already left written for us to do. Lean and depend on him. Don't give up. Don't give in. Amen. Turn with me this morning to the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. I will be reading out the New International Version of the Bible. Amen. Verses 35 through 39. Amen. God is a good God waiting to be praised. If I could just get two people out in Facebook to begin to lift up them holy hands. And praise the Lord with me. Whatever those two people are going through right now, I guarantee you they'll have the victory over whatever trying to pull them down. Because God hears your prayer. And God will honor your prayers. Amen. And guess what? God inhabits the praises of his people. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for what you already done for me in my life. I thank you for what you're doing. And I thank you for what you're going to do. God inhabits the praises of his people. Come on and praise him with me, Facebook world. Come on and praise him with me, uh, Palestinian United Methodist Church. Ain't he been good to you? Did he bring you all last week? Did he bring you all last month? Did he bring you all last year? That's the kind of God we serve. And guess what? He's going to keep on bringing because God 
is waiting on us. Praise the Lord in the midst of this pandemic. And see, won't you get the victory? Romans 8, 35 through 39. And it reads, beginning at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, a hardship, a persecution, a famine, a nakedness, a danger, a sword, as it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I bring you good news this morning. Good news from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. I want to talk just for a minute Nothing can separate us from the gospel, for we are victorious. Nothing can separate us from the gospel, for we are victorious. And looking at all the chaos in the world today, all that has been going on in the last two or three months, Hey, this, this started just before last month. It's been going on. It's been going on. A lot of men would easily say that a life of victory in Jesus Christ is impossible. But reading what the Apostle Paul said this morning tells me different. Paul said, yes, this is possible for us to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Because God is with us, Paul said. And if he is with us, Paul said, nothing can be against us. Paul reminds us that in the fact of every possible adversity, every situation, every circumstance, every disaster, if God is in us and we in him, we already have the victory. Nothing can separate us from the gospel. Victory for the believer was won at Calvary. You remember Calvary, don't you? It was just three weeks ago that he went to Calvary and he, and he hung up on that old rugged cross, but early that Sunday morning he got up with all victory. That's the Calvary I'm talking about. Oh, how quickly we can forget. All we have to do is open up our mouth and claim the victory in every situation. Oh, it may not look like it, but, but see, a lot of us think like Thomas, sin is believing. But see, you got to believe you're going to get to heaven before you see the heaven. Uh-huh. We must learn to speak life over ourselves. Not only ourselves, but our families and our situation. We must learn to speak life. Scripture declares in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. The question on today is, do you believe that? Do you believe that you are already victorious in, in spite of the situation going around us? Do you believe that that? 
COVID-19 has no victory over you. Do you believe that because you're not working, the financial situation you're in don't have a victory over you? Do you believe it? Regardless of what your sight may see, the promises of God will never fail. Jesus declares in Luke 21, 33, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. So we need to be standing on God's word today. God's word is sure. God's word will never fail us. Who report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe CNN? Are you going to believe WTVA, WCBI? The report of your situation, are you going to believe it? Are you going to believe the report of God's word? Are you going to believe the good news today? Which one are you going to choose to live by? Hebrews 10, 38 said that the just shall live by faith. Those that are justified by faith through Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul, he, he knew. He knew adversity at its greatest. He was a man of faith that endured. He endured one circumstance after <laughs> And those circumstances appeared to be unbearable and unthinkable at times. But yet, he still declared on today that we got the victory. He still declared that he had the victory. He said, for I am persuaded. Do you know what persuaded me? That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul had a, a made-up mind. He had a made-up mind about his relationship with Christ. His focus was not on the suffering. His focus was not on, 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 on COVID-19. But his relationship with Christ was what his mind was on. See, during this time that we're here alone, sitting in our homes, in our in-home shelter, in-house shelter, however shelter you want to call it, we should be getting a closer relationship with Christ. Paul's attitude remained one of confidence. See, we should be confident that God's word has already went before us and made a path for us. And we should resist defeat. Yeah, we should resist defeat. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 that we are troubled on every side, yet not in distress. He said, we are perplexed, but not in despair. He said, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. We are knocked down, but we are not knocked out. That's a hard reality, church. It's a hard reality of what life is. But we being true soldiers, we are on the battlefield for our Lord. We will be knocked down, but we won't be knocked out. I've been knocked down, but I ain't been knocked out, thank God for Jesus. I had people to walk out on me and turn their back out on me. I ain't did nothing but try to love them. I, I, I had to forgive some folks, and folks had to forgive me. But God said in order for us to get into the kingdom of heaven, we must accept the forgiveness that God gives, and then we must forgive others. So that what you're talking around, running around talking about, I'm going to forgive you, but I ain't going to forget it. It ain't going to work. We got to believe that we have the victory. No matter how much chaos is going around us, we got to endure, saints. Paul knew that God would work in his situation. We got to know that God is working in our situation. Paul 
Paul knew that he was going to have the victory. We got to know that we are going to have the victory. We must believe just like Paul believed. God has put examples all through his, his good news, the gospel for us. We must have a mind made up. We must have a victorious mind. We must start speaking victory in our life. This is the place we must strive for daily in our life. And as we strive for it, believe it or not, we will reach that place because we are believers. Paul gave us many words of advice on how to keep the victory forefront in our mind. Because believe me, when you take two steps, the old saying going to come and try to take three steps from you. That's when you have to go to your word. That's when you have to start speaking victory. Keep the victory in the forefront of your mind. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and strain forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. We have to be like Paul, church. We got to know that we have the victory in every circumstance through Christ Jesus. No matter what's going on around us, we, we got to know that we have the victory. We got to know that the victory is found in Jesus. Not in your social status, not in your bank account, not in your church affiliation. We got to be like Paul. We got to know that it, the past is the past. And as my pastor said, Pastor Mason said, we got to keep it moving. We got to keep it moving forward with God. For there is a crown to be won. And we got to be determined to win it. We got to get up when we don't want to get up. We got to walk in it when we don't want to walk in it. We got to sing it when we don't want to feel like singing. How about you this morning? Are you persuaded that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? I am persuaded. See, you don't know my life that I live. You know, you don't know where I come from. But I know, and I know what he has done for me. And I don't Claim no, no defeat this day. I claim victory in everything I do. Uh -huh. He may try to stop me, but he can't do much, nothing but kind of pause me up a little bit because he can't stop me. I'm like Paul. He was strongly persuaded of who Christ was in his life. Are you strongly persuaded who Christ is in your life this morning? Paul fought the good fight of faith. And he fought it with confidence. He fought it knowing that he had the victory. When we fight, we don't go in to fight as a defeated foe. We go in knowing that what Jesus has already done has, has granted us a victory already. As I get ready to close this morning, are you persuaded on the day? Can Nothing not change your mind on your victory in Jesus Christ today? Do you have a fixed, immovable, unshakable conviction of who God is and what he is doing in your life this morning? Are you persuaded that God is fully aware of everything that's taking place on this earth right now? Are you fully persuaded that God is it, it, it's fully aware of everything that's taking place in your life this morning. Are you aware of it? Regardless of what the enemy of your mind may say today. Oh, he's going to come and say, you ain't nothing but a loser. He's going to come and try to pull you down. But you got to know that Romans 8 and 28 saying we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. 
if we don't faint and give up, church, there's a crown of life that awaits us in heaven. If we don't give up and we begin to speak victory in our life, we will have victory over everything that's trying to come against us. The Bible says that you are the head and not the tail. The Bible says you are above and not beneath. The Bible says if you speak those things that be not as though they were, uh -huh, it may not look like it, but see, looking like it ain't going to get us in hell. See, Jesus didn't do what he done for us where we can come to church looking all pretty and dressed up. Uh-uh. The battle has been fought and the battle is steady being fought every day. Just don't faint and give up, church. You'll be able to say victory is yours. The songwriter said victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. In the book of Romans, you'll find if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and on the third day he rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, a lot of us think salvation is a very hard thing to do. And if you repeated that and if you believe that God said that you are saved, but some of us think we have to run backwards five miles, turn 700 flips, and then God will accept you, I'm here to tell you the devil is alive. Salvation is believing and accepting. And then you will ask God, the Lord, Take me, make me, mold me, and use me for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And find yourself a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church and begin to see the thing God will do for you and do through you in the upbuilding of his kingdom. I believe right now that we all are victorious. I believe right now that God is working through this pandemic. And after this, there will be a great revival. And I and I, I want you all to know that I, I miss all of you. I miss seeing you. I miss the conversation with you. I miss the hugging. Our normal may not never be a normal like we know again. But get this. Our Lord and Savior never changed. He the same as he was yesterday, today, and forever. Try Jesus. Try Jesus today. And you'll be able to sing that old song. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. May God bless you and may God keep you. May God continue to shine his countenance upon you. Victory today is mine. Thank you for listening to the good news.